Thanks very much for the opportunity to do this. So I mentioned the Wessex Health Partners at the beginning as one of the regional initiatives. And I was asked to kind of flesh that out a bit and tell you exactly where we are and what we think the direction of travel is. So the Wessex Health Partner, its goal is, is this partnership that learns together, accelerates improvements in health and social care through innovation and training and research. Um, prior to us taking on this project, we had applied for an academic health science centre uh, with, I can't remember who funded that, I think it was the NHS funds those. But anyway, we didn't get it, but we got very close, which was satisfying. The criticisms were, one, we weren't very mature. Um, and one, and another one was that our data sciences could do with being improved. And the last one was they weren't convinced that we had a process in place where we could exercise pull from clinical and health need into the research environment. Now, how do our researchers, people like you, know what's needed in the clinic or out in community care? We were complimented, however, on our ability to bring institutes together from across Wessex, which is apparently unusual in academic health science centres. So our objective with the Wessex Health Partners was basically to form an academic health science centre, but not with the, uh, the accreditation that we would want to get next time we can compete. So to do this, we had to bring together all the trusts and all the universities. And we have three parts to the programme. One is called discovery, one is called translation, and one is innovation. So discovery, which I did along with Rob Hull, who's here, was to find out exactly what research is going on across our universities and in the end across the clinics as well. And then we had the translational bit and the innovation bit, which will be handled primarily by the Academic Health Science Network, which is led by Bill Gillespie. So he's doing that bit. I'm doing the discovery bit. And Christine McGrath, who does strategy development for Southampton General, she's doing the governance and how all of this hangs together. And we're governed by a working group that includes all the partners. So our goal in the discovery pathway, which is what I'm going to talk about, is to, do, to identify very broadly the range of regional expertise. And we're doing this for very pragmatic reasons. One is we can then uh, deliver integrated health and care across the Wessex community. And what's happened since uh, we started this is we're now quite firmly embedded inside the integrated care system, which uh, is a whole load of acronyms and stuff here, which, bring, which are going to replace what were called the clinical commissioning groups and organize uh, the whole of the, the delivery of health to the Wessex area, to the Hampshire area, because we're dealing mainly with the Hampshire ICS. But from my point of view, and thinking about competitiveness, having these programs together allow us to respond rapidly and quite effectively to emerging issues, such as COVID. And in fact, it was the COVID pandemic which really brought all of this community together. And as you've already heard from Rob, it was quite a spectacular effort, uh, and we contributed uh, quite seriously to the international response to that uh, crisis. Also, from my perspective, this one is terribly important. I forgot I've got a button on this, I'm not here. Because the only way we can apply now for some of these funding opportunities is if we work as a community. The day of the single PI putting in for a large grant seems to, seem to be kind of out of favor now. We need to work together as communities to get some of these large grants. And as you all know, the turnover times are sometimes horrifically fast. So if you don't have your community built already, you're not going to be able to go in for these big grants. Um, also, we want to know what our partner skills are. We want to support the enterprise sector for economic growth. So what does this look like? Here's just some of the results that we found out, just looking at what's going on. This is a very t over t you know, top view of this. We first went to all of our universities and we asked them what they thought they were good at. This has not been calibrated. We're not doing this in any kind of judgmental way to say Southampton is better than Portsmouth or anything like this. That's not what we're after. We're after just understanding where our universities have capabilities and just mapping that against each other. So there's, there's no, the idea is community building, not competition. And it was interesting. I found a lot of this interesting in that there are clear areas where all of our universities are doing quite novel and interesting things. And we can put them together in this kind of table, and we can see that in the application space, particularly in lifestyle, 
musculoskeletal, mental health, and primary and social care, every single one of the higher education institutes has activity in this area. So these are what we're going to try and do with this information, I'll end on that, is figure out where our unique selling points are, or where our selling points are that we can use when we go for these big grants, or we go to be an academic health science center. Uh, of course, in, in, the, in what you would call the enabling technologies, again, we have very interesting strengths. The stuff that's really interesting is going to be in data analytics and visualization in particular, and also in our biomedical engineering uh, capability. So we're strong. We have some very strong activities in our core research. What, is the, what are the needs then for the clinical site? And I didn't know anything about this when I, before doing this. And again, it was quite interesting. We went to all the trusts and we asked them to tell us what their key areas of activities were. And then we've mapped them here in a simple table. And you can see that the, I think it's the purple, is the one where everybody does something. I think, yes, the purple. So cardiovascular, children, musculoskeletal. And so we're getting a feel from this kind of analysis what's important to the trust, where the opportunities might also be for engagement between the clinical side of life and also, I have to say, community, because that's becoming increasingly important, and our research, not just in STEM subjects, but also in social, behavioral, and in the end, there's also going to be an environmental component to this. This perfectly complicated table was actually the most interesting discovery in all this. And I think it was Rob who pulled this out of the, the clinical research network data. And that's what this is. I know it looks kind of awful, but what it does is it maps all of the clinical trials that we're doing in Wessex across all the trusts. So it's this Wessex CRN data. And what you immediately find out, and it's in these red boxes, is this area is, is nationally very high up in certain areas, which was, I'd never seen this kind of information before. So again, in children, public health, respiratory, cardiovascular, neurological, diabetes, and dermatology, as well as ear, nose, and throat, we rank in the top, I think that's the top five, um, in the, the top third uh, in England, right? Um, and the size of the bar tells you a little bit about the intensity of activity. But the other thing we were able to do with this is map that then across to what the universities can do. And again, what you see, which we didn't know before, is there's actually some very good maps, you would have guessed some of it, I have to admit, between the clinical drivers and the research capabilities. So what we need to do as a community, but also just in general to make things work better, is figure out how do we link this activity with this activity? How do we create an environment where clinicians know where to go when they have a question that involves, might be data analysis, it might be a therapy, but it might also be a piece of med tech that they want to, to bring into their clinical application space. And that's really where we want to be uh, with this project. So bringing all this together, we were able to create this map. Um, and this tells you what, how we see our strengths within the region in this area, because the center is the Wessex Health Partners. This is kind of what it's going to be up to. Round here, including Envix here somewhere. Where's Envix? There's Envix. Um, are all of the large investments that we see in infrastructure capability in the Wessex region. And it's really quite extensive. We have a lot of fantastic facilities, a lot of fantastic drivers. And then by organizing in this outer ring, what we found out by doing these surveys, uh, we can get some idea of where our key areas of specialty are. And now what we will be wanting to do is officially launch the partnership, because we're pretty close to that, um, we need to start employing people to actually hammer out governance and so on and a business case for this. But in the end, what we're looking to do is figure out ways of making these areas become prominent areas of specialty for the Wessex region and prominent areas to attract funding. <coughs>